And we are live. Welcome to the Fabulous Life Masterclass with Dr. J. And my host today is the former mayor of Jackson, Pastor Tony Yarber. How you doing today, Mr. Yarber? Hey, I'm good. I'm real good. <laughs> I ain't got I don't have COVID. Uh I ate three times already today. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Go on, preach then. <laughs> yeah. How you doing? How you so, doing? I am better than blessed. No complaints. And complaining won't help us no way. Look at you. got that good old church answer. Look at you. <laughs> cool, cool. So, I want to get started off with this master class just by asking you, who is Tony Yarber? Um, you know, that's a good question. I, I'm... I'm trying to, I'm in a, a, a place in my life where I'm really rediscovering Tony. Uh, so that's a, that's a loaded question. I'll just put it this way. Um, I am, um, I am on a, uh, I don't know how to, I guess a personal journey where I'm, I'm redefining me. Uh, I'm, uh, reinventing me. Uh, I'm rediscovering who I am. So that's, that question is a to be continued. It will freeze up as soon as we got started. We the audio and everything was doing fine. Yep, it's all good. It's all. Do I need to say it? Do I need to repeat myself? Yeah, repeat what you just said. Okay, good. Because that way I can say it better than I said the last time. The first time I I was struggling. So I I, I think um, that right now where I am in my life, I'm I'm on this. Uh, journey of rediscovery I'm, I'm reinventing me i'm rediscovering who i am i'm um i'm i'm learning that you know life if you if you pay attention to your life if you're intentional about your life uh then you'll you'll always find yourself in spaces where you get an opportunity to to not necessarily reinvent yourself or recreate or anything like that uh but i think i think life gives us opportunities to sit back evaluate where we've been uh, evaluate the work we've done, the lives that we've lived, and then you get an opportunity from there to decide how you want to move. The decision that I made based on uh, my own personal assessment of Tony was that there were some things that I wanted that I wanted better, uh, that I wanted better for me, that I wanted better for out of my life, and just some things that I wanted different. Everything wasn't, you know, things weren't necessarily bad, but um, I, I just wanted some different stuff at this place in my life. Cool, cool, cool. So, how does God fit into that place in your life? Who is God to you? Perfectly, uh, God fits perfectly because uh, this journey of um, rediscovery and and spiritual restoration, all of that, all of that, the the centerpiece of that is uh, it hinges on this statement. Okay, God, how do you want me to run this this time? How do you want me to do this? this time right so i'm 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 finding myself where i'm actually intentional about um having having god in my relationship with god in the center of the room and decisions that mm -hmm. i make and, and the decisions that i make come out of that principal place oh wow wow i like that having make sure god is in the room with those decisions what about love what is love uh, what's love got to do with it? <laughs> uh, Tina says the secondhand emotion, but I, I, I think for me, love is the assurance that, um, it doesn't matter what place or what state I'm in, uh, that there was a level of long suffering that either the people, the humans that are assigned to me by God will long suffer with me through or that I will in turn long. So see, you know, people look at love and it's to people think that love is clean and that love is um, sexy and, and I, love ain't none of that. Love is dirty. Love is grimy. Love is mm -hmm. uh, uh, nose to the ground, elbows in the dirt. You don't love me because you say, you know how many folk swarping down, they love me and I ain't seen some of them in a year. It's the people who have the audacity to long suffer, 
right? Hear the word at the beginning, long suffer. So, so I define love by exactly who God is. He's a long sufferer. He's one that sticks with us through all of our spanks. See, you, Dr. J, you'll get sick of me acting crazy. And your love gonna run out on that. And then you start saying crazy stuff like, I can love you from afar. No, you can't. That, that ain't even scripture. <laughs> that ain't even Bible. I just love you from afar. No, what, what, that, what you're saying is, is that is that you will tolerate me. Yes, go on, preach. Not that you will get in the dirt with me. There's a difference. And so that's what love is to me. You know, I learned at a young age what love is. I used to attend Bible study under Paul Williams when he was here uh, at Metro East Church of Christ. And I yeah. memorized, um, was it First Corinthians 13? Yeah. So I knew that whatever I was looking for, it had to fit in those parameters. So yeah, Paul was exactly good. on target. I enjoyed watching Paul. Paul was a solid teacher. Yes, yes, yes. Look, Paul is my favorite in the Bible. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so, you know, I can talk about the word all day long because words are powerful. Yeah. You know, the very first scripture my father taught me was life and death is in the power of the tongue. Come on, We power. got the power to bring life to people by what we say. Yeah. We got the power to bring death to people by what we say. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, <clears throat> what about your accomplishments? What would you say is your biggest or greatest accomplish accomplishment? What are you most proud of? Being a daddy, hands down. Everybody I've interviewed has the same answer. Everybody is proud of their kids. It's the only thing. It's the only thing that I'm legitimately good at. Mm. It's the it's the only thing that I can do unconsciously it's the only thing that i can do that is selfless it's the only thing that i can do that um i know that whatever i'm doing as a daddy that there's nothing that, that, that my motivation for doing it comes strictly from the place of love i can't say that about everything else so what about in contrast what would you say is your biggest fear or your biggest failure? Well, my biggest fear used to be failure. Um, I think my biggest failure uh, is not recognizing my blind spots soon enough. Uh, not recognizing the things about me that um, that could torpedo my life. Uh, not recognizing. I'm not talking about, you know, uh, the kind Sins that we commit outwardly. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about heart matters. I'm talking about uh, not dealing with uh, hurt appropriately and, and, and not getting healed from stuff before trying to move on to something else. So, so I think my biggest failure in life is not attending to the little things that always created uh, 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 hellacious situations for me. You know, I, and I, I, I really think that everybody needs healing, meaning counseling. Everybody need. Everybody has. If you don't heal from unresolved childhood issues, they become adulthood issues. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. So I tell people all the time, like, hey, deal with those issues now, or you have to deal with them later. Find you a couch. Uh, find you a chair with a certified therapist who can help you process and understand who you are. You know, when I talk about this new um, journey to, of rediscovery, for me, that started at the VA hospital about two years ago. I was uh, there um, working as a, a chaplain intern, and I was in a program called uh, Clinical Pastoral Education. And it, and it was in that program where uh, my life started being deep deconstructed dr j and when i say deconstructed i mean it was a it was a real opportunity for me to be in a space where people could, could look at me and say you know what you're arrogant right and then and then i gotta look at these folk and hear everybody looking at me shaking their head like yeah you real arrogant my guy right 
Now, in the past, I couldn't receive that. I ain't arrogant. I'm confident, you know. I'm, but 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 now I'm in a room. I can't go nowhere because we're in there all day, and I got to deal with the fact that this is mm -hmm. an Achilles heel for me. You understand? And mm -hmm. so when I talk about not identifying those things earlier, do you do you, the Bible says that pride comes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a great fall? Well, had I had I actually struggled with um the spirit of pride in this because I wasn't struggling. I was just living in it. Okay. There's a difference. You can be in pride or you can be in sin and then you can be struggling with sin and God honors the struggle. I just want to say that, but I wasn't struggling with it. I just was living pridefully and that pride, um, disallowed me from seeing certain things, seeing certain pits and seeing certain pitfalls. So, um, th that's why I am. I, I, you know, I got somewhere and sat down, uh, got on somebody's couch who I go see every month and, and, and she's helping me process life, helping me process past, helping me process where I am now and help me understand how that looks, uh, as a healthy future. You know, a couple of things you said that, you know, made me want to have follow-up questions. Okay. You dealing with, <laughs> you, um, I guess what exactly made you want to deal with, because I don't believe that people, you can have too much confidence or you can be arrogant. Um, I think that, you know, I like when people have confidence, you know, if, if somebody confidence is bothering you, then it's something wrong with you. What made you think that you had, you were arrogant? I didn't think I was arrogant. I, I, I thought that I just had confidence, but the fine line for me, uh, and there's a fine line between arrogance and confidence. Um, mm -hmm. Arrogance is void of the wisdom of God. Mm. Confidence is full of the wisdom of God. So, wow. so I can be confident in the same things that I'm arrogant about only my arrogance doesn't allow me to turn around and shine the light back on God. Wow. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. I, I follow you on that. Yeah. yeah. Um, what about um, people that may be watching this, that is hesitant about getting help? What would you say to them? I get it. You know, men, men yeah. they, they can I, just I, be men and I can suck it up. I would say I understand. I get it. I, I absolutely understand. But let me tell you something, though. Um, most people end up going to therapy and counseling because of trauma. Okay. Um, most people don't really want help or most people don't really get help until some traumatic event. I said most, not everybody, you know, for you, for your viewing audience, you know, loses it. But most folks, there's got to be a traumatic experience. And what I, what, I, what I would say to these brothers or whoever is the worst thing that you want to do is to be trying. OK, let me put it this way. I would much rather go in. I got my annual uh, uh, physical coming up. I'm going to see Dr. Turner uh, shortly. And when I go see Dr. Turner. Um, I'm not speaking this. I'm just giving an example. I would much rather if Dr. Turner was to say to me, hey, man, we found something. Uh, but the good thing about it is it's early on and we can deal with it versus I walk in and they and they give me news like they gave my daddy uh, when he got his diagnosis. You might have six months. You might have three. You understand? And so it was so. So that's traumatic. And what I would say to folks is you don't want to find yourself in a situation where whatever your condition is has uh, progressed so, so much so um, that it is that that the, even the medicine can be hurtful, uh, more hurtful than it needs to be. You know, just like chemotherapy, sometimes chemotherapy, I believe that, chemo, that chemotherapy kill more people than the cancer does. That's just my opinion. OK, but. I would challenge people. You don't want to find yourself in a situation where depression has almost 
ha has turned into oppression and you don't want to find yourself where you become somebody that you don't recognize nor do you like before you decide to go and have a conversation with somebody. What's up, man? <laughs> um, so how would you define success? Oh, um, that's a good question. I, that's a, I don't I don't really know how to answer that. We go our whole life want to be successful, you know. But a lot of people don't know. Just like they don't know what love is, they don't know what success is. But see, I think I think that love, the defining love, is a little different. I think love is a little more concrete with certain nuances. But success, I think, is absolutely personal. You know, yeah, it's I think different for everybody. I think it's part for me. Success is going to the ATM machine and not having to get a receipt. Uh, uh, you understand? Like, cause I don't need to know my balance. Cause I'm good. You know what I'm talking about? I'm good. Like, that, that's success for me. Success yeah. is um, putting everything on automatic draft bills and everything, and I don't even think about it. You know, those are the success for me is going to sleep at night peacefully. Um, success is is I'm successful when my children accomplish things. So I, you know, I, so I just think I just see it. I see it um, as something that's personal, and that only you can determine uh, within yourself. What about what's your favorite book? Oh, that's easy. My favorite. I have two favorite books: uh, mm -hmm. Animal Farm and Charlotte's Web. Animal Farm and Charlotte's Web. <laughs> and y'all need to go read Animal Farm. I promise you, Animal Farm, it applies right now. Go read and George Orwell's, uh, uh, what is it, 1984, whatever it is. I, I can't think of the name of it right now, but those are good books, man. And they really speak wow. to what's happening. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Cool. So, what are now, about movies? What's your favorite movie? I text you the book that I'm reading right now. I can't. I want. I want to tell you online, but I text you the one that I'm reading right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what you read? Fifty Shades of Grey. Was it? <laughs> I read that. I read that one already. I, <laughs> I tell you about it. Text me something. Text it to me. Text it to me. I got yeah, you. I'm gonna it. Say up. Um, my favorite movie. Oh, everybody, the color purple. You, you know, told hop over me. Five minute sermons out and preach with the color purple in it. About <laughs> 50, 11, 000 of them. Wow, wow, wow. So, what do you like about the color purple? I like, um, I love how she examined uh, the, the the black family. I think I think that's what I, I think I love. I think that I appreciate being able to watch the color purple and see people that I know. And I don't mean that I know the characters, but right there are people that that I grew that I you know I've seen. Oh, a miss. I, I know uh, a hoppo, you know, uh, so I think I think just being able and my mama we watched it um, when it first came out. When we were children, you know, I, mm -hmm. we watched it so much. What part of the movie is in? It could be the last thirty minutes. I'm watching it. Right, right. And don't you know, as kids, we just thought everything was so funny about this film, especially when the little boy said, "It's gonna rain on your head." It's just rain so many funny. Parts <laughs> yeah. Yeah. in the oh, movie, definitely. but when I watch it as an adult, I see it through different lens. Yeah, it means yeah. something different to me because this woman was abused, and it's like you know, and a lot of people live through that, and we wonder why we have so many issues. Let, let me say this right quick this ain't got nothing to do with what you're talking about, but you, since you brought it up. People, you know, we got a bad habit of judging things that we didn't have to live through. Mm 
you know, we we say I, we say ignorant stuff like I am not my ancestors. I know you ain't. You can't even keep a job for a year. You ain't nowhere near your ancestors, right? We say crazy stuff like that. If I was a slave, I would have done nothing but been a slave. That, that, that's how you would have done. But but I bring that up to, to point out that um, you know, back 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 then, that kind of stuff was all right. Like people. A man beating on his wife and jumping on his wife. That people thought that was all right. Seriously, when Hoppo comes to her for wisdom on how to deal with his wife, hurt people, hurt people. This woman yep. says to Hoppo, what? Beat her. Beat her. Beat her. Like that's the remedy. For your wife, and when when she don't do what you say, like that's the remedy. And so when you think, you know, you look back at a time like that, and you're like, wow, you know, the mentality, the mindset, um, uh, the the kinds of things that happened, the degradation, not by white folks, but but we watched the movie about black folks, where degradation was happening by black folks to black folks. But here you say that, you know, what comes to mind the cops being grown people because they didn't do what they told them to do. And what's happening right now? <sighs> cops, you know, the grown people. <laughs> and it's like, it has to be an, a, a, another solution because it's not working. What they're doing now is not working. They wouldn't want nobody to beat them. Well, they proved that. I, I watched a video today of a young man, a uh, white boy, who who uh, was probably for six or seven minutes in the dash in the in the uh, body camera video, um, telling the police what he wasn't gonna do. He ain't gonna get out the car, cussing them, f you. I'm talking about. He's just going off. They tase him. They spray him. Then they wrestle with him. And then guess what he does? He shoots both of the police officers. Wow. So, so, you know, you bring that up and you say they wouldn't want nobody doing them like that. You're right. Because they don't even do them like that. They only do that to us. And so when you hear when you hear white folks say, well, white people get killed by the police, too. They might, but they ain't going to get killed to after a 20 hour standoff. Show me those tapes. I want to see those tapes. All right, I, I'll I haven't them. seen that one. Somebody send it to me. I'll, I'll look for it and send it to you. I'm, I'm talking about the white people getting killed by cops. Oh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Show me those. Right, right. <laughs> I want to see them. But yeah, we can be we can talk about that all day long because it is an issue and it's been an issue since what 1619. Since you know, when they had the slave patrols and, and, and hey, we can I can trace it back. So what about song? What's your favorite song? I I don't have one. Uh, I don't have a favorite song. I I, I don't have one. Now, <laughs> now, now, I got a theme song. You want to know what it is? What's your theme song? Ooh, my theme song, Mystical. Here I go. Here I go. Here I go. Don't do it. Don't start. Okay. <laughs> Had to put up the picture of you yeah, flexing. <laughs> oh, you fancy. You fancy with it. I'm gonna have to look at you. Yeah. I, I, I look. We can do some classes. <laughs> hey, you got up there right there. When I tell you I was holding that stomach in and it couldn't breathe. <laughs> Ooh, and then that suit was tight too. Child, I remember that picture. Look, speaking of our, our interview is going, you flying through these questions. So that's why I'm talking about other things. But speaking of stomach, the issue with Maggie Way and the email that she received, I um I responded that I would have slapped the lady with my stomach. <laughs> 
you know, somebody teach her to talk about people. First of all, let me say that I love Maggie Wade. Um, I, 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 there is not a a sweeter human being alive. If anybody's ever been around Maggie Wade, you know Maggie Wade. She's the most encouraging individual and you would think that by now because of all the news she's done all the neg negative news that she's had to report about that she would be jaded but this woman is uh she's one of the most godly humans that i've ever met in my life with that being said right. maggie call me uh you understand i don't care nothing about it holler at me man i got you i ain't the male no more i no like they gonna make me come out of retirement <laughs> don't don't bother don't bother maggie but look I, somebody posted something today um about that and it kind of made me mad but I, I left it alone but the guy made a comment basically he felt like mag since the lady came at her in the inbox that maggie should not have posted it out loud well i didn't respond on his post but i'm gonna respond to him right now bro you crazy let me tell you why you crazy. You crazy because whenever somebody got the audacity to come for you anywhere, in your inbox, at church, uh, in confession, I don't care where it is. If they come for, if they, it ain't like the lady went to Maggie and said, hey, Maggie, I have some uh, uh, products that I like to sell you uh, that could potentially help your health and wellness. That ain't what she did. She came for that woman. So she deserved to be put on blast. As a matter of fact, I don't know. I haven't looked in, or not, but Maggie, you need to post a picture. Hey, that's what they've been trying to get her to post the pictures. Hey, these people post go eat her up. up. Post her. Let's make her famous, Maggie. Let's make her famous. <laughs> and whoever it is, hang on. Let me hush. Let me chill out. Cause y'all, y'all, y'all don't, y'all don't, y'all don't know this tone. And then you act like you don't like him when I give him to you. But Jesus loves us all, and that's I, I so gracious about Jesus. You got saved <laughs> right quick on that one, right then. I appreciate you. You brought me back. <laughs> don't mess with me. Hey, Not bother me. It's crazy. As crazy as Kanye is, the old Kanye said, first they love you, then they hate you, then they love you again. That was the realest thing I heard somebody say in a long time. Well, 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 let me help you. Let me help you with some with some real, real. And, 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 and uh, Lauren Hill said, they hail you, then they nail you. Mm. Go ahead on. Same thing. Yep. yep. How? What are we going to do with these people? Nothing. So, <clears throat> going to let them people be. So, if you could send a mess to your younger self, <laughs> what would you say to your, your younger self? I would say slow down. Um and I will say everything that you think is bad, it really isn't. Um, and don't feel like you have to make decisions when you don't have all the information. Right. <clears throat> well, for those of you all who are just tuning in, we are interviewing mr tony yarber if you have any questions definitely post your questions below we want to make you a part of the show uh, make sure you tune in on thursdays at eight o'clock our guest next week is miss yolanda singleton and so we just want to keep you all engaged and having these conversations like this you know it's not too often that we have just real life conversations you know when i <clears throat> finished school got my phd I that's when I really dealt with my stuff because I had all this time on my hands and it's like all these thoughts and things that I went through as a child start coming up and I I really had to deal with it. And so I wanted to do this class to help other people deal with their stuff, their junk. And if we don't dump yeah. that stuff we carried it on with us when when she talking about bag lady. That's people pulling all that junk with them. A lot of people don't even know. I mean, that they pulling this junk with them. Yeah, 
Yeah, and 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 that junk has influenced our personality. That junk has influenced how we respond to stuff. Um, you know, you 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 would be amazed uh, at how much stuff we got from somewhere else. Um, and when I say we got it from somewhere else, we got it. We got it because of negativity, and and in a lot of cases we've normalized. You know. Um, we we think we think it's okay to be in the store and holler at our kids cussing them out across the store. We think that that is I don't know what we think. We think that that's okay. Yeah. You know, we think that that's okay, but that's a learned behavior. That's something that we saw happen. We saw that and so that's what we do. And so it ain't nothing to be standing in standing in the line at the store and to turn around and tell your son, "Shut your up." You know, and the whole all of Walmart heard you when you do it. So I, I think that um, those kinds of manifestations, uh, they speak loudly to the stuff that we ain't dealing with or haven't dealt with. <clears throat> so what do you think it takes? What point, you know, you said sometimes people uh, are something had to, has to happen in their lives for them to get to that point to want to seek help. Mm-hmm. When would you advise people to seek help? So let's do this. I, I think that we need to start treating mental health the same way we treat our physical health. Right. So uh, I just told you that I'm going to get a wellness check. The Dr. Turner going to do my wellness check. Well, I got more than just my body that I need a wellness check on. I also got this. I got, I got this. Um, and I think that we need to, uh, everybody who's watching, you need to find a therapist and just say, Hey, I want to come check in. A lot of therapists, uh, do the first session for free. Um, so I would challenge everybody to find out, uh, figure out somebody to go see, to go talk to and go get your mental wellness check, go get your emotional wellness check. The same way that you'll get your uh, annual or your 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 uh, yearly yearly review. Uh, I definitely agree. So let me ask you this: <clears throat> What is your favorite scripture or your favorite quote? Um, right now, my favorite scripture is "A soft answer turns away wrath." Uh, it's my favorite right now because uh, um, I, I, let me see how to put it. I don't bother people, Dr. J, but I don't, I got a bad habit of, of, of not picking my battles all the time, of not picking my battles better. Um, and, and I got that honestly, you know, I got that from somewhere that if somebody book, you book too. You know, uh, but but I'm I'm dealing with that, and I'm and I'm intentionally that when I want to pop off, and you might I deserve it, and you might not, but that ain't that's not how I want to answer. No answer at all. And I definitely agree. You know, growing up. A lot of us was taught if somebody hit you, you hit them back. Yes. And you know, I had. <laughs> yes. I remember my grandmother telling me, "You pick up something and knock the hell out, knock the hell out of them, <laughs> and then you run home, and it and if they follow you home, I got it." My mama used to tell us that. My mama said, "Used to tell us don't come to this. Talking about somebody that did right. something to you, you ain't at least knock right. them in the head." How we were raised. I'm out of raised. Don't I don't, don't come here crying. Talking about what I did to you. Uh, did you what you do to them? Right. Exactly. Yeah, so we were taught that. A lot of us were taught that. That's what I'm telling you. We got. I got that from somewhere. And then let me tell you what's funny though. Like right now, guess who be trying to check me about that? My mama. I'd be like, later. I got that from you. <laughs> When you look, she's saying when you know better, you do better. Yeah. Better. Yeah. Yeah. I want to go back to the scripture because <clears throat> Creflo Dollar taught me a long time ago that you can't think bad thoughts and speak 
the word at the same time. Right. Let me say that again. You can't think bad thoughts and speak good things at the same time. So I tell people when those bad thoughts come to your mind, use the word of God to fight them. That's what the word is. The word is a sword. The word is a tool for you to deal with things that's going on. And most people just go through the motion. They don't use, they don't apply the word to their lives. They just, again, because they were taught that mama and them went to church, grandma and them dragged in the church. And so a, a lot of people go to church, but don't even have a real relationship with God. Yeah, I think I think that um, church has become more of a matter of uh, procedure, which is why I'm grateful for the pandemic in that regard. I, we're going to um, at our church, too, that we're having uh, a socially distanced prayer meeting. It's the first time that we've been in church since second week in March. OK. But the people I, I got a sneaky suspicion that they're going to be people at prayer who, who didn't come to prayer back in the day. And, and I guess my mm-hmm. point is that church had become so procedural and process driven for us that it, that it, that it was no longer heart driven, you know? Mm-hmm. And so now, now that now folks want to be in the house of the Lord. They're like David. And I was glad when they said to me, let us come, let us go into the house of the Lord. That's the, that's the sense that I'm getting uh, versus the sense that I was getting in the past. What is your favorite story or character in the Bible? David. 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 David, uh, I I think because people, um, they don't know how to deal with David's complexities. And so people are going to do one of two things with David. They're either going to romanticize him uh, or they're going to vilify him. Uh, so so they're going to talk about David, the king and the worshiper, and they're going to love that. Oh, David. Oh, David. David said, I encourage myself in the Lord. Or they're going to talk about him in Bathsheba. That, that, that's, but, but he's more than that. He's more than that. I said on somebody's show the other night that, um, and most people don't know this, but David was an outside child. David, David wasn't his, he was a half brother. To those boys that uh, the prophet came to anoint, that Samuel came to anoint, because they looked over him before. Well, see, they looked over him because he wasn't even. They didn't even. Mm-hmm. Jesse's wife, which was David's daddy's wife, David's stepmama, wasn't finna have no outside kid in that house. So you know what they did to him? They sent him in the field with the sheep. But see, we romanticize that. Oh, David was in the field with the sheep, tending to the sheep. He didn't want to be there. Right. He, wanted to be there. he <laughs> wanted to be up there with his with his family. Sheep stink. Sheep do do a lot, too. And so David had to maneuver all of that. Maneuver the manure. And so, so David had daddy issues, man. He 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 didn't he didn't understand what a home life looked like. He didn't he didn't he didn't even come from a broken family. He literally wasn't even included in the family. And and so before you run to Bathsheba, I want you to run to the field where you got a little boy living alone, raising sheep. But see, you don't know all that. And because you don't know, all you know is about Bathsheba. So that's what you go in on because that area of your life is good. You ain't got no Bathsheba in your life, but you got a whole lot of hate in your life. You got a whole lot of uh, of dishonor in your life. You got a whole lot of that other stuff. And so I love David because David challenges us to look at uh, the complexities that are in ourselves. David was a worshiper. David was a warrior. David was a king. David was a priest. David was a musician. David was a hoe. David was a murderer. Shall I keep going? Right. Right. So, so David, David is the guy that for people who are complicated, people who find themselves to be a little bit different, 
than everybody else. A little bit on the on the on the extremes, or you're 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 one of those preachers. You like me. Um, you love God. You love the word. The word of God. You just ain't really churchy. And so, so, so I identify with that, David. I identify with that, and I think a lot of other people would as well if they understood it more. Wow, wow, powerful! I like the way you broke that down. Um, for me, I have to say, the woman at the well. Mm. The fact that Jesus had to go through Samaria, Samaria to get to where he was going. At six o'clock in the morning, just so he can have a conversation with this woman. He sent his disciples on, you know, and, and he told the woman, the man you with now is not your husband. You don't have five husbands and the one you with is not your own. You know how many women out there can relate to that? People have labeled them because of things. And yeah. I just thought it was powerful and she ended up being the first preacher she left her water pail what well, she came there at six o'clock in the morning to get yeah. and went to the town and told the people come see a man who told me everything i've ever done yeah. could this be the messiah yeah. Yeah. and when i tell you this story touches me <laughs> yeah. you know, th let me tell you though that, but that's the wisdom of jesus because what, what 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 you said was powerful because people look over it he sent his disciples away all right. He sent them away because he knew them. He knew that they would not be able to handle her truth. Come on now. So I can't take y'all because the stuff that me and her about to deal with, we about to deal with real life stuff. And y'all too yeah. churchy. You, you too saved or 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 you too hellified to want to be saved. So everybody that want to be saved, you're going to vilify them. So Jesus says, y'all go on. I'm finna go meet with a woman that's, that, that, that's on uh, dude number six. Uh, she's got a she's got a form of godliness, but she denied the power thereof. She don't even really understand what worship is going to look like after this. So let me go deal with her. I'm going to send y'all on because the, 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 the realness of her troops, everybody ain't able to deal with. And so you got to be all right with that, Dr. J. You got to be all right with people not being able to get with your truth. And the moment, the, the minute that you're okay with that, then that's the minute that God will start sending people who get you. Right. And, and I want to know where did this churchy, perfect um, persona come from? Because Jesus died for our sins. You know, why do people think that if you're saved, you got to be perfect? You know, you can be well, striving to be better, but we all going to make mistakes. And instead of us showing compassion to one another, we point our fingers and laugh and point out other people's flaws. When he said, hey, take that log out your own eye. <laughs> why are you looking at this needle in my eye? Well, you know. Church is no different. And well, let me back out back out of that and not say church. Church people, they're no different than anybody else. And and church people are competition driven, right? And we are we are also a, a bit self right, more self righteous than we want to admit. So most church people, let me tell you where they come from, particularly in this when they sit in that seat of judgment and self righteousness. They're typically judging something that either they don't struggle with. Or they ain't got caught about. Either it's because they don't struggle or they just ain't got caught yet. And so what we love to do is we love to flaunt what we're good at. Or we love to flaunt the area that we are most successful in. So if I'm a if so so if I'm a student of the Bible, and I am, um, and then you get up and you start quoting the scripture and 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 you don't exegete it right. And then I'm going to tear you apart because you didn't exegete it right. Because I know my stuff. <laughs> well, why did I learn all that? Well, why do I know my stuff? What I learned all that for? So I can sit back and talk about how you don't know yours? No. I learned mm -hmm. that so I can reach back and strengthen my brother. Each one. Exactly. Yeah. So we, we do. But that's, I mean, you know, that's what church folks do. If, if, uh, uh Shantae sleep with Keisha's husband and because 
the lady over here ain't ain't slept with nobody husband then Shantae the worst woman in the world but you got a husband and he can't stand you because you're a horrible wife you in worse yeah. shape than old girl that slept with the man because the bible says that it's best for a man to live on the roof of a house than inside the house with a quarrelsome woman you think you're doing something you raise hell every day you come in the house everybody what's going on why y'all don't nobody want y'all that you're no better but you, you're not. You ain't no better. Because what you're doing is you finna run him off. But but that's hey, what we life do. and death is in the power of the tongue. I'm with that's, you. That's what we do, though. I mean, that's what we do. We Whatever we don't, if it ain't our struggle, then we feel like we got the right to work on other folks about that. And, and I'm out. Let me leave that alone. I'm going to get out of that. You know, I done seen God do some things and, you know, that's why I don't put my mouth on people and their struggles because it may be them today <laughs> and it could be me tomorrow. Tell you now, believe so, better. Hey. Yep, yep, yep. And so if I just want people to have more passion, compassion with people that are struggling, people that are going through things and we make it worse. You know, they're already struggling with something. Then we come talking about them and pointing it out. And, hey, we make people feel worse. And we the ones call ourselves Christians. Come on, you talking real good. So I just, you know, <clears throat> we just want to encourage and lift people up. You know, that's the purpose of this master class, to have these conversations that people don't have every day. You know, people don't like talking about their struggles. People don't like talking about, you know, just some of the things that we've been talking about in this conversation. You're right. You're right. And I, and I, I appreciate uh, what you're doing. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to be on uh, and, and to be able to help to deal with uh, people to see the importance of dealing with this kind of stuff. So, you know, Keep it up. I'm 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 glad to see you doing it. I'm glad to see the quality of people that you're having, uh, that you're having on. I like how you get uh, folks that people think got it all together, and then they get Lord have mercy. Uh, <laughs> they got it all together, <laughs> and then and then you know we we get on here and we're able to just open up and people say, oh, you oh okay all right, and that's what's so powerful mm -hmm. though, right? What's, what's powerful yeah. is, and, th and that's, that, that's that difference between confidence and pride or arrogance, because I've, I've done a lot of things. I've accomplished a lot. God has been amazing to me. I mean, I've done and seen and accomplished and been a lot of places. If, if I was going to put plaques and trophies in a room, there would be no room for them. But there, all of those accomplishments were not void of trouble that they weren't void of me having personal stuff going on it wasn't void of my children having stuff going on I done, I've gone through having a child um, uh, arrested well not arrested but almost arrested uh, uh, a child with cancer you know d just all kind of stuff so this master class in my opinion it gives people a, a chance to see Oh, problems are universal. Struggle is universal. They ain't no different than me. So if yeah. he can be on the mass class show today, I can be on the next year. Right. And that's all I, I feel, when you're going through it, you feel like you you're the only one. Because I, I remember back when, when I was going through it, I felt like I was the only one going through the things that I was going through. But when I began to talk about my struggles and hear all these people saying, oh, they happened to me, too. They happened to me, too. I was like, oh, my goodness. Why isn't anyone talking about this? Oh, you no. know, Warren said something so powerful. He said, you know, most people think God wants to use our strengths. But it's our weakness that he wants to use because our strengths create competition, but weakness creates community. Wow. And I just think it's powerful. Well, you know, the scripture says that uh, it's in our weakness that his strength is made perfect. Yes. And, and uh, 
so I, I, I wholeheartedly, uh, I agree with that. I never thought about it that way. God, but, but let me tell you what, uh, John P. Key said, and then I, I, I'll be done, uh, preaching. John P. Key said, the thing that you want to hide is the thing that God wants to use. Yep. 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 I mean, I, I, I can agree. I don't know if you ever heard my story, you know, but I started off being a motivational speaker talking about me being raped at a young age, me being molested, you know, having those tough conversations that people don't want to talk about. People don't want to face those real hard truth. But if I hadn't faced those real hard truth, Tony, I wouldn't be who I am today. Yeah, but you know, you got to... You can't really blame people a lot um, because sometimes it's hard to talk about trauma and pain. And then on the other side of it, everybody ain't wise like Jesus. Everybody ain't sending people off that can't handle your truth, you know. And then we've not been wise. We've, we've shared our truths with people who, weren't, who couldn't handle it. And so when we, when we do that, then those people end up creating... Um, uh, spaces of distrust. And so now there is no safe space uh, to keep it real. There is no safe space um, to say what it is and then that be it. So we've got to do a really good job. Those of us who uh, have figured out a path, who, who have figured out how to process our mess and continue to thrive, we, we got to figure out how to create more uh, uh, shared space. I, I attempt to do that. I think even in, even in ministry, I, I don't do it like I used to. Uh, I used to be really transparent in ministry, but that, that, <laughs> that doesn't work really well most of the time. So what I've, what I've started to do is I've started to just create space to have conversations out loud. So, so we've been talking in our, uh, uh, our church lately about um, spiritual restoration. Well, you can't talk about spiritual restoration if you're willing to tell the truth and say, man, somewhere along the line, I kind of lost a little faith. I don't really know if I believe it like I say I believe. You got like, to be willing to tell the truth about that. Like, let me tell you what I, and I'm, I, I know I said I was done preaching, um, and I think I lied, but this is my last time lying. Um, I think... <laughs> no, nah, never mind. I'm, a, I'm. I just leave it alone. But I, I. No, just, go ahead. It's a, somebody out there need what you're about to give them. Okay. Let me tell you what I've been discovering when I'm talking to people who who's gonna be honest. A lot of people struggle with life after death. Mm. Like we preach, we preach. Uh, Second Corinthians. We, 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 we preach all of that. But when I have real conversations with people, you know what people say? They're like, man, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know what happens when you die. I, I, and I'm like, you don't know. You've been preaching for 20 years. You've been, you been, you, you been saved for 35 years. Now, wow. now, guess what? They need a space to be able to tell that truth. Yep. Right? Because more people struggle with it. And I'm just giving that as one example. Just just one ex example. But yeah, that's right. Jesus said, Father, why have thou forsaken me? And, and, and then the scripture even speaks, Curtis, uh, when, when um, the brother was struggling with faith. And he says, Lord, I believe. And I help my unbelief. But we, you know, we just got to create a space that's safe enough. Uh, for people like my homegirl TT to be able to say, I don't like church. Why, TT? <laughs> this why I don't like church. And TT going to say why she don't like church. But TT might not say that to you, right? But she'll say it to me. And and and, and you got to, we've got to do that. We got to be able to help people um, where they are. And, and just because somebody struggling with it, don't make, don't make, there ain't nothing wrong with them. They ain't crazy. Uh, they ain't an infidel. They ain't left God. They ain't walked away from God. They're having a moment where the Bible says that we got to work out our own soul salvation. That's what they're doing. They're working that thing out. Yeah. 
But you know I what I say you. to those people who, you know, have something to say about people who share their story like me? You ain't got a heaven okay. or hell to put me in. Come on. <laughs> judge me. You can't judge me. You ain't got a heaven or hell to put me in. And when you, you become one with your stuff and can't nobody use it against you, that's freedom. It so is. But see, I got to get like you. You see how sweet you just said that? You ain't got a heaven or hell to put me in. You know what I'm saying? See, see, my normal response, and I'm praying. God been working on me. I've been reading his Bible and <laughs> On my attitude and my responses. See, my attitude in the past would have been, "Who, who gonna check me?" Who? What <laughs> but no, you're right. Um, we've got to. We and I'm. I'm not even worried about those people anymore. I don't think about those people. My concern is for the folk, whoever you are, oh, wow. whoever, in, the, in the space right now, where you could be sitting in your car or you're in your house or you just glanced through and saw this up. I just want to simply encourage you that there is no freedom like living in your own truth. I want you to understand and hear me, hear me and hear me well. It is likely that there are people in your life and the reason that you aren't able to live out your truth is because you're under the subjection of somebody else's expectations of you. To hell with that. Free yourself. Figure out who God wants you to be. Understand how you're supposed to get there and cut the cord because there are people who have expectations of you that they don't even have of themselves. They ain't even got them. That includes mama and them. That, that include mama and them. That include church folk. That include grandma and them. That include, that include all of that. It doesn't matter. I love my mama to life. You understand? I love that lady. Right? But she, she can't run my life. Yeah. I know that she I know that she wants the best for me, that she's got only good intentions for me. But guess what? I'm living my life. Totally going to live. You understand? And I'm going to live because I understand. I understand that what God has for me, I understand that what the creator has established for me, that it is on it is on me to go get it. It ain't on my mom. I'm 73 years old. She didn't live her life. Yeah. And still living. You see? And so that's how you got to see this thing. You got to be willing to walk out of the shadows of other people's expectations because that's all that it is. It, it, it's a shadow. And it's likely yeah. overshadowing your becoming. So be free. Great. Come on up out of that thing. Yeah. And understand that, 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 that the only expectation that you really have um, uh, reason to attend to is the expectation to extract every gift, calling, mm. purpose. The only expectation on. that you ought to have on yourself is that when you die, that you don't make that graveyard richer. Yes, indeed. You have gave it all you got. Wow, Tony, Finish this has been an awesome, awesome interview. I really, really enjoyed it. We probably have to do a part two because this was actually really, really good. Right, Any well, part that you would like to say to the audience? No, nah, because I know my bedtime creeping up and I said everything. And so I'm old. I go to bed early, Dr. J. <laughs> well, we apologize for keeping you up oh, you, this late. You, but thank you so much. I really, really appreciate you. No problem. I Have a good night. You. you too. Take care of yourself. Good to see you. And I appreciate being on. Thank you. I'm honored. No problem. All right. Good night. All right. Good night. <clears throat> I hope you all enjoyed Masterclass tonight. Again, we are live on Thursdays, 8 p.m. Our guest next week is Miss Yolanda Singleton. And if it if anyone that you would like for us to interview, definitely contact me, inbox me, or you can put a message below and let us know. And so we just want to have a real authentic uh, conversation with people so that we can help people who are dealing with junk, who are dealing with life, who are dealing with stuff, who are dealing with issues, who are dealing with hurt, who are dealing with pain, who are just lost and need some direction. We all need direction at some point in our lives. And like I said, I wouldn't be where I am today if it hadn't been for me getting on my knees and just crying out to God saying, I can't do this no more. You got to show me. Show me. And when I tell you he did exceedingly, abundantly, 
above all that I can ever ask, think, or imagine. And I just want that for everyone. You know, when I read some of the comments that people are posting uh, on the other people's pages that, and the hurts that's, that's out there today, it really does something to me because I can just be around a person, tell whether or not they hurt or heal. I can see somebody page and tell whether or not they hurt or heal. And I know everybody has their own course that they have to take. And, you know, I just want to help people, point people in the right direction, you know, because I was lost at one point. And, you know, I had some people that pointed me in the right direction. He said, are these master classes stored anywhere for future views? You can go to my YouTube page, all of the master classes uh, that I've um, conducted are on there. Uh, I know I had have had at least about 20 something uh, shows. So you can go to my YouTube page and all of the classes and interviews are there. Um, I have had some good interviews and I think uh, some of my favorite guests have been my father, Eddie Carson. He was my first interview. Uh, Curtis, you did a very good interview. I enjoyed you. Uh, Tony just did a good interview, uh, Councilman Stamp. And so I'm just excited about having these real conversations with real life people, people sharing. You know, some people don't know whether or not God is real. Some people struggle with their faith. You know, I just want to have real conversation with people and um, just get feedback from you. So thank you all for tuning in. I hope that you all are getting something out of this class. Definitely give me feedback. If you don't want to put them in the comments, inbox me. Uh, if you have any ideas to make the show better, I am open. Hey, I'm growing every day. That's why I'm here. And when I stop growing, hey, it's time to go. Again, thank you all for tuning in to the Fabulous Life Masterclass with Dr. J. Remember, God is fabulous and so are you. Thanks for tuning in. Same time next week.